everyone. It's Kendra Morgan for TLC Designs. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm sharing how to make this fun theater fold birthday card. Now to make this card, I'll be using the clearly coordinated Celebrate bundle from TLC Designs. This bundle includes all of the products that you see here. This is the Celebrate frame die that comes with this frame plus an inner rectangle and these two oval dies here. One says celebrate across the top and then it also includes a candle and a birthday cake. Next, this is the celebrate ribbon die set and it comes with these two border strips here that also have the little ice cream cone and birthday cake dies separately. And then this is the celebrate border die set that has all kinds of treats including cakes ice cream and cupcakes plus it has the straight line die that allows you to cut another layer to put it behind the first layer to show off the treats and then this is the celebrate sentiment stamp set it has some great sentiments that work for almost any occasion like congrats hello celebrate you're sweet and just make a wish first you'll want some heavyweight cardstock to use as your card base you can use one sheet of eight and a half by eleven to make this entire card, you'll need to cut two pieces at four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This will be the front and the back of your card, and then cut two more pieces to measure four by five and a half. These will be your curtains. Now I've placed sticky notes on each of the pieces so I don't get them mixed up. And so now I'm going to take my curtains and I'm going to score each of them at two and three quarters. And again at one and a half inches. So once you have these scored and folded, folded over, they'll be mountain folds and you'll just take your bone folder along the folds just to make sure that they lay flat. So the way this will be put together is that your curtains will be glued down to the back piece and then you'll have this front piece here that we're going to cut out a frame in the middle so that there's a hole where you can see to the back of the card which is i guess where the name of this fold came from because it looks like a theater stage to decorate this card i'm using the watercolor naturals designer paper set and I've picked out the blue and yellow to use for now, but I'll also be using the light red piece here shortly. I'm going to trim down a piece of the blue to measure four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to use the Celebrate frame die on this piece. So I'm going to run this through my Big Shot die cutting machine. Now this frame die has little cupcakes on it that face the other way or portrait rather than landscape, which is the way I'll be turning this. So I'm gonna cover those up here in just a bit with some ribbon die cuts. So now I'm taking the inner rectangle die and I'm placing it in the center to cut out my hole in my frame to create the stage. I placed the frame die back on top so I could line this up exactly where I needed it to be. And I'm placing some mint tape on it to hold it in place. And so now I'm cutting the yellow watercolor paper for my curtains, but here's where I messed up. I cut these at two and a half inches by four, but they should have been cut to two and three quarter inches to cover the entire white card base. It's not a big deal because I add another ribbon die cut to each side later on, but just so you know, you'll want to cut your pattern paper to cover the entire curtain on both sides. Now I'm taking the Celebrate ribbon die set and I'm cutting out two strips from the yellow. I wanted to mention that if you have really intricate dies like this one and you don't have one of these die brush tool sets with the foam pads, you really should invest in one. All you have to do is place the die on top of the foam and run this roller brush on top and it removes all the tiny little pieces super fast, which is way cool. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the blue paper. I'm going to cut using that same Celebrate ribbon die. And so now for the Celebrate border die set, I'm cutting out the treats out of this light red paper. So I'm going to run that through first. 
and then I'll be taking the blue piece and I'm gonna put that behind the red piece so here I've already cut out the red and I'm just lining this up and I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine so that I have it lined up exact this piece is going to go across both curtains behind the frame. Of course, it'll need to be cut apart, which I'll show you in just a moment. But to be able to hold the front of the card to the curtain pieces, you'll need to cut two one inch by six inch strips. These are going to get glued behind the frame so that the curtain pieces will be able to slide in and out to open up the card. So the easiest way to put this together is to take the curtain piece and fold over the end of the strip on one end and then scoot it up about an eighth of an inch and then fold over the other end. This will allow some space for the pieces to slide. So again, I fold over the strip along the top of the curtain and then I'm going to scoot it up an eighth of an inch and then bend up the bottom piece. Now these folded pieces are what you're going to apply glue to in order to attach it to the back of the front frame. But before you do this, I wanted to mention that you should probably cut out the finger holes first as these strips will be in the way of doing this, but I'll show you this here in just a few. So I actually got this idea to make a theater card from my friend Margie Christofferson. She, we're both in a Facebook group called Card Swaps for All Seasons, and she sent me an SVG file. But I wanted to figure out the measurements so that in case you didn't have the ability to use an SVG file, you would be able to make this card. Here's a little clip of the card that I made for her using her SVG file. Now that I have both of these glued down, I'll go ahead and show you how this will be assembled so we can glue down the curtain pieces to the back piece of cardstock that we labeled earlier. So the front of the curtain slides into these strip holders that we just glued down. And then these bottom flaps are what we're gonna glue down to the back of the card. Lining up the edges of the back sheet and the edges of the curtain pieces isn't as important as lining up the curtains in the center of the front of the card. You'll want it to close completely, so make sure you push the curtain pieces close together and line those up. And you only want to apply glue to the one and a half inch section that's closest to the outer edges on both curtains. So you'll do this on both sides. Just apply glue on this one and a half inch piece right here. So after letting this dry, now I'm going to stamp my sentiment into the center of the card. I'm using the Just Make a Wish stamp. And first I want to take my frame and place it on top of the back piece so I can mark with a pencil where the frame is going to cover up the back piece. This way I'll know where to place my stamp. I'm using my Misty Stamping Platform and I'm placing the edge of the back piece along the top edge of the platform and I'm holding the other side down with the magnet. I'll be placing a die cut birthday cake below the sentiment that I'm stamping so I just wanted to make sure that I've given myself enough room above and below my pencil marks. I'm using a blue colored ink by Catherine Pooler called Something Borrowed and because this stays wet a little longer than some of the other inks I have, I can add some embossing powder to it before it dries in order to make the sentiment shiny. 
So I rubbed my anti-static powder bag along the part where I'll be stamping, and then I inked up my stamp. Now this stamp pad is really juicy, so I kind of made a mess whenever I applied my ink to the stamp. So I just wiped it away with my mi microfiber cloth, and because I didn't want any of that excess ink getting onto the card base because there are some ridges there since it's got a couple of layers. I applied several coats and then added some clear embossing powder on top. And then I let my heat tool heat up for about 30 seconds before applying it to melt the powder. So next I cut out the cake die from the red paper the red watercolor paper, and then I used the inner rectangle piece that was glued onto that heavyweight white card base at the beginning, and I cut it out uh, using this die too. So it's super thick, and I knew it wouldn't cut all the way through if I just ran this die through my die cutting machine once. I wanted all of the little pieces to stay put so I could glue the red piece on top and have the blue show through. So now I'm going to glue down these yellow watercolored pattern papers to the curtain pieces. And then I'm also going to cover up those sideways cupcakes on my front frame. And I'm going to use those ribbon border strips that I cut out earlier. So after gluing down this strip of red treats down to the blue background strip piece, I'm trying to line this up so that the bottom of this is hidden by the front frame. But in order for the card to open, this strip needs to be cut apart. And I didn't want to just cut this directly down the center because it would cut the cake in half. So I cut around it on the right side. And then I lined it up again and marked it with a pencil so that I would know where I needed to glue it down. When gluing this down, you want to make sure not to add any glue to the little piece that will be hanging over. I accidentally got a little bit on there, so I had to wipe it off. And you could always use adhesive remover too if it doesn't come off completely. If you make mistakes like I do, I do this a lot. <laughs> I trimmed off the edges that were hanging over the border along the edge of the curtains and then I erase my pencil marks. Here I'm just putting the card back together to make sure that the curtains still slide open easily now that I've added those die cuts to the front. And it does, works perfectly. Now to decorate the front frame a little more. So I'm going to take the little cake die from the ribbon set and I'm going to cut out some light red and blue cakes and layer them up like I did the big cake. Next here is when I discovered I didn't have my finger holes cut out yet. So I'm taking my T-ruler and I'm just measuring where the center is. And I'm going to attempt to cut through all of these layers using this one inch circle punch that I've had for a really long time and I discovered that it no longer works. So um, it was a lot of layers, so I thought, okay, well maybe it's just uh, too thick for this to go all the way through, but that wasn't the case. It doesn't cut through anything. So I ended up just chunking this. So I used the next size down that I had, and because I tried to cut through all those layers, including the strip, which was a big mistake, you wanna make sure um, that you move the flap out of the way. So I accidentally got a little bit of a slice out of that back strip, but I'm gonna um, cover that up with some washi tape. So here I, I used the 5 8 of an inch circle. I'm trying one more time before I uh, just decide to chunk it in the trash, but it did not work. 
bye bye one inch punch i need to get a new one now so i'm going to do this on both sides making sure to pull that strip that's on the back out of the way here i'm just trying to fix what i damaged with the one inch punch that it was partially cutting through so the purpose of these finger holes is so that you can um, easily pull the curtains out so now i'm just adding some ice glaze stickles to each of the cakes to give it some glitter and shine after letting that dry i glued down the cake in the center of the card and then i decided to add some enamel stars to the front of the frame just to give it a little bit more interest so as you can see here i added some blue glitter washi tape to the back of the strips to cover up those little sliced areas where i was trying to use that one inch punch that didn't work and so here i'm just assembling the card and all i need to do is slide the curtains in and here we go here's the finished card it was a lot of fun to make i love this theater card because your recipient can place it on display like artwork i really hope you like it and this inspires you to give this a try there are endless possibilities that you could do using this fun theater fold if you like this video please click the thumbs up and leave a comment and let me know you stopped by also please consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber check out the links to the products i used today in the description box below thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again soon have a wonderful day